fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you Spidey Classics episode number 16. That's right, guys. Now, the issue that I'm bringing you today um, takes place in December of 1989. That's right. That's when I was 14 years old. That was a long time ago. And the issue that we're going to be talking about today is the Spectacular Spider-Man issue number 159. That's right. This is when co comics were a dollar back then. And this continues the Acts of Vengeance storyline, and it deals with Spider-Man having his cosmic power. So it continues that storyline on here. Brothers Grimm never always, never really made an impact in my life. I was think the only time I ever really remember uh, these two guys in here is uh, in this particular issue when I remember reading it. Um, this book is written by Jerry, Jerry Conway, and the art is done by Sal Bashima. Um, artwork is pretty cool. I think maybe at times it like maybe a little detail. I mean, you got the Twin Towers here, right? And it's great to see these, these buildings in this comic brings back some memories. Uh, but there's no detail on them. There's no lines. There's no windows. There's there's nothing there. Um, so uh, what I feel when it comes to the artwork in here, it does lack some detail. Um, here we get to see, you know, typical Dr. Doom slouching around in his chair, you know, just being lazy. I could see, like, Dr. Doom having this big gut under his armor because he just slouches when he sits in his chairs, you know, which is funny. Um, facial expressions are okay in this book. Um, but again, I just thought it lacked great detail though, but it is a classic comic book and I love rereading these old stories, huge exaggerations when it comes to like, you know, land plots or whatnot, just, just big things going on in this book that's just improbable, but it, it's pretty cool. Uh, here are some more pages in there. So yeah, it's not a bad book, but I feel that lacks certain detail in areas of the book. So now, what does this particular story entail? Uh, in this particular issue, you get to see the Brothers Grimm. They were in uh, in jail. And then what happens is uh, the wizard kind of releases them and says, Hey, guys, uh, we have a mission for you. We want you to kind of destroy Spider-Man. In return, we'll return one of your most hated enemies. And it was... Um, Iron Man. So that was the exchange there. And we find out that in this particular issue that Spider-Man is having real complications dealing with his his powers uh, in, in the book. He, he can't seem to handle these cosmic powers. And Jerry Conway really, really explains a lot that he's having problem handling these powers, handling his spider sense. It's almost like he is just like giving it to you too much like okay we get it Jerry we know he's got he's got lots of problems here and it feels like that kind of overshadowed the whole typical story but I guess what he was going for in this book was the emotional piece that dealt with Peter having these powers and it seemed like the other part of the story was maybe secondary um, we get to see that uh, Dr. Doom is spying on him, and uh, Dr. Doom wants Spidey's new cosmic powers for his own greedy purposes. We all know how Spider-Man is. We see that um, J. Jonah Jameson in this issue is actually walking around Empire State University trying to recruit uh, Spider-Man or Peter Parker into a new uh, magazine that he wants to open. And uh, he sits there and he says he's going to call it uh, War against um, Fireheart, uh, who took over his company, which is the Puma. And uh, it was pretty cool because there's some awesome dialogue moments in there where he's like, hey, Peter, you want a cigar? He's like, and then uh, Peter's like, uh, I don't smoke, Jonah. And he goes, yeah, of course not. Filthy habit, never should have started it. You know, I just could picture his voice in the actual uh, book. The issue continues. Uh, we get to see Madison Square Garden winds up getting lifted up. Uh, by some of the wizard's devices, and then Brothers Grimm is sent to go destroy Spider-Man. Um, one of the cool powers that Spider-Man has is basically at will, he can control his his um, 
web lining and make it into anything that he wants. So if he wants to make it into gigantic balls, he can do that. If he can make it into a gigantic hand, he can do that. So that kind of reminds me a lot of Green Lantern there. So you can see that he uses these powers to make this inflatable whatever it is to capture people. And uh, I thought the book maybe could have done a better job at showing that particular power. But I think that's kind of cool. Again, reminds me of like a Green Lantern in this issue. Uh, but in the end, he winds up prevailing against these brothers Grimm. And these guys didn't really do too much of a matchup against Spidey because in previous issues that had to deal with the Cosmic's power, um, he had to go against the Graviton, uh, Trapster, which is not too much, Titana, Magneto was a good, a formidable foe. But these brother Grimm's was no, no match for Spider-Man. He definitely prevails in the end. And uh, he's kind of... You know, Mary Jane goes out on the town and he's just having just a hard time dealing with the situation at hand. And he's watching TV, eating a frozen dinner. And that's how the issue ends. So what did I think about Spider-Man uh, or Spectacular Spider-Man issue number 159? I thought it was an okay book. It was nothing here that really stood out. I've read better issues when it's come to the cosmic powers of Spider-Man out of this run that I've seen that Jerry Conway has been doing. Um, I thought that the Brothers Grimm were a very weak opponent, and uh, I felt that uh, his other powers could have been explained more besides him dealing with his spider sense, how his spider sense were always, you know, taking over and, and things like that. And... Uh, again, the other part of this story, the Acts, Acts of Vengeance story, kind of really seems secondary here. But I think that's maybe what Jerry Conway was going for. Again, the, the how Peter is dealing with this newfound responsibility. So overall, all in all, there was some good character moments here. But this, out of the most recent issues that I've read in the past, uh, this book for me uh, gets a three and a quarter out of five stars. I uh, can't wait to see where this storyline continues. I think it continues in Web of Spider-Man issue number 60, and uh, that might be the next one that I will be reviewing. So guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. Leave those comments below on what you thought of this issue. And fans, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in that next comic book review. Take care, fans. Bye.